You are listening to Weight Loss Made Real. This is episode 284. I'm your host, master weight loss coach and author, Cookie Rosenblum. Today and every Tuesday, I'll be your coach and your guide to help you end that emotional eating and lose that extra weight. If you just found me, welcome. And if you're a regular listener, welcome back. This is where we talk about your habit of emotional eating or stress eating, which is the main focus of all the work I do. This is weight loss for the thinking woman. Here is where coaching meets psychology and psychology meets brain science. And this is where your problem ends. So get comfy and get ready to be coached. Every once in a while, I go back and look at prior episodes that you may have listened to if you found me a while ago, or you may not have heard if you just found me and jumped in. And some of these episodes you need to hear again. So today we are giving you a classic replay of an older episode that's very important in your journey. All right, join me now. This topic that we're going to talk about today is, are you bored or tired of thinking about food and eating? This podcast was inspired by one of the members in my free Facebook group called Weight Loss Made Real, just like this podcast. And in that group, we talk about what you might learn in this podcast. We take what we learn here, we take it on a deeper level so that you can connect with me, ask questions, and get some of the little tidbits that we learn about in much more depth in the Freedom Group. I want to keep this member of that group anonymous, but she said something that made my ears and my attention perk up and take notice. She said something that I've heard many times before, and I wanted to talk about it with you. You might relate to this type of thinking, and you might be taking breaks from your Project You because of this kind of thinking, because you're telling yourself, I'm just so tired of thinking about the whole subject, or I'm so bored with the subject of weight and food and eating. You might believe that thinking about food is going to lead you to overeat more, and you just don't even want to think about it. But when you don't think about it, you do what you've always done. So that's not the answer. You might be tired of planning what you're going to eat, tired of thinking about the fact that you do need to eat several times during the day. You just might be tired of the whole subject, right? Because the subject represents your struggle. And maybe you think you've been working on this long enough. And if you don't have the results that you want, you just want to take a break. You want to pause. But you and I both know what taking a break means, right? It means stopping whatever momentum you've had and eating whatever, whenever. Well, I want to help you today reframe this whole issue of being tired or being bored with the whole subject because this subject is what you need help with right now. So we're going to take it apart and we're going to start taking a look at how you go through your everyday life right now. Most of you go through in some way, shape, or form, you go through your day on autopilot, right? You have your wake-up routine. You have your breakfast routine if you're eating breakfast. And then you have your daytime activities, which might be work or other things that you need to get done. And then we have a lunch routine, afternoon, which includes dealing with tiredness and feeling depleted. And then we have that transition to getting home and doing dinner and then that evening routine. It might be part of your routine that you overeat in the evening at the end of the day from all the emotions that you have or haven't processed during the day. So all those different parts of your day, they, they're they things that feel like they just happen, right? That you just wake up and you follow the patterns. Whatever pattern you follow is what creates your end game. 
Your end game is your end result. It's not something that happens to you. You always create it, whether you're conscious of it or not. When you don't think consciously, you go into that autopilot mode. Now, I want you to think about this. When you want to stop thinking about something like eating and food and weight loss, what you're really saying to yourself is, I just want to stay on autopilot. I don't want to change enough to pay attention to myself. The truth is that paying attention and getting off autopilot, that is what is required for change. Paying attention to yourself and seeing what you're doing and consciously choosing to do some things differently. That is a requirement. If you want something different, you need to pre-think it so you do something deliberately, not just go into that habit, that autopilot mode. This is a little bit like watching a preview of a show or a movie. You look ahead, you see what's coming. You want to look ahead at what you might be facing so that you could think and plan ahead and act deliberately. Now, I know that you want weight loss, which is probably why you're listening to me, either to lose the weight or to at least lose the whole struggle. You want that to feel natural right? You want it to feel natural in the sense that you just don't have to think about it that much. But here's the, here's the key. Natural for you is what you're already doing. I really want you to hear that. I know that you just want to wake up and know what to do, not have to plan, not have to think about it. It's the same old, same old subject. But right now, when you do that, you are creating more of what you already have. So if you want change so much, why do you hear yourself saying, I'm so bored with this whole subject. I'm so tired of thinking about it. I don't even want to think about it. Why do you resist thinking about it? The what you'll eat, the when you'll eat, and the how much you'll eat. It might be that you're simply rebelling but you're rebelling against you. It might be that you're impatient and you don't want to put the time in. You think, hey, I've already been struggling with this for so long. I'm just tired. It shouldn't take this long. I'm tired of thinking about this. You may think that it should just be natural, but remember what's natural for you is what you are already doing. You have to put the time into thinking about eating in a different way to get a different way of eating, of living, of caring for yourself. You do have to do that, but it's for now. You're not where you want to be yet, and yet is a key word right here. It will come where it will be natural, but you're not there yet. So for now, yes, you do have to think about it and deal with it. Eating, we know, is a part of life, right? It's a part that you do so often, it of course becomes routine. Part of life is feeding yourself. Part of life is taking care of yourself. This is necessary. This is not something that you could delegate to somebody else. Even if you're very financially comfortable and someone cooks for you and even serves you and let's throw in cleaning up, why not? You still need to tell them how you want to eat. You still need to recognize the signals from your body and to know when to stop and when to start. You still have to make those decisions and those decisions require thinking. Now, Sometimes you just want magic, right? I just want to wake up and not have to think about it. It's boring. I'm tired of the subject. I get it. But to get to the point where you hardly have to think about eating and food, you need to be practicing doing it a different way. So first, you need to see what's happening. You need to see how you're doing it right now. You need to see how you wish you were doing it and what results you wish you had. You need to see how that kind of woman 
that version of you that you want to be, how does she eat? That's what you want. And then you need to look a little deeper and say, okay, it's not just how she eats, but how does that version of me think? And when you do this, you're learning to close the gap between how you're eating now and how you want to eat. Okay. So then there's the practicing part. Yes. Practicing thinking and feeding yourself and eating in a way that you wish right now could just be natural until you practice it so much that it actually becomes natural. Let's go back to why you might be rebelling against thinking about and planning how and what you're going to eat. Maybe you just don't want to be told what to do. Remember the old childhood reaction, either from you or from a child, when they think or you've thought, hey, you're not the boss of me. You can't tell me what to do. Even when you're learning a new way of dealing with food and you see that it is for you. In the Freedom Group, we call this loving self-discipline, knowing when you need to correct yourself from rebelling against the very thing that you want. And often this means that you need to learn how to lovingly say no to yourself sometimes. No is not a bad word. No one is making you think ahead to what your different eating situations might be. No one is telling you how you will eat or how you will manage your emotions, or how you will take care of yourself. Because when you take care of yourself, you're not desperately attacking the brownies in the kitchen that maybe you baked for family or friends. So I want you to see what you're doing now and stop thinking, well, I'm just going to step back for a minute. I'm just going to do what I want and eat what I want because I'm so tired of the whole subject. I want you to step back for a minute and think about how much sense this makes, or rather how much this does not make sense. You want this change. So you need to put the time in and think about it now. Now, natural eaters don't think about food all the time. They don't. They look ahead. They probably know what they're going to cook for dinner. They might have an idea of what they will order when they go out to eat, maybe. They know that they have or will be able to get what they need, so it's available when they're home and that there's food when they need it. Then they don't have to plan every meal and every bite. They don't think about food all the time. They go about their life. They notice when their body's empty. They notice those signals. They notice these things physically. They already know what some good eating options are, so they don't rebel and think, I shouldn't have to think about this. They see it differently than you may be seeing it. They see it as just part of being an adult and taking care of themselves. If you were taking care of a child and part of that care involved making sure the child got the food that they needed, and this might be for 10 years, 15 years or more, would you say, I'm so tired of feeding this child? Now, I'm going to be honest and say that when my kids were little, cooking so much felt like a lot of work to me. And my husband and I would occasionally jokingly look at each other and say, do we really need to feed them again? But in reality, of course we did. We love them. And you will, of course, do what it takes to feed yourself in a helpful way. Because no matter what you weigh today, no matter how frustrated you are, you do love yourself. That's why you're here, to help yourself because you care. Even if you don't like the results that you've created so far. So back to our original subject today. Yes, you need to work on Project U until you get what you want. Yes, you need to focus on when you're eating and when you've had enough. Yes, you need to put thought into what you're eating and whether it's helpful or not, and whether it's giving you the results you want. And you will do this until it becomes so natural that all the ways you focus on this now, they'll fade. 
you will have instilled habits, habits that work for you and help you do what you want with very little effort. You won't have to spend so much time making food and eating decisions because it will just be what you do. And you and I talk about that all the time, right? At the end of these coaching sessions, we will work on this until it becomes what you do naturally because that is your goal. But for now, let's take a look at how you're doing. Does any of your self-talk involve telling yourself that you're just bored with the whole thing? You're tired of the whole thing? I want you to be honest here because if you often say these things to yourself, even if nobody else hears you and nobody else knows about that inner conversation, these thoughts will lead you to keep taking breaks. And when you keep taking breaks, you don't develop momentum, you don't get traction, you don't make noticeable progress. When that happens, you're in danger of giving up. And objectively, I know that that is the last thing you want. So do you have to keep thinking about it? Yes, until you practice it and it gets natural. Okay, my friend, that's it for our coaching session today. I hope you enjoyed this classic replay and got something important out of the main concept. If you're on my wait list for the Freedom Group, I am getting ready to share with you a special offer coming up in August that we have never offered before. So if you're on the wait list, watch your emails from me. If you're not on it yet, there's still time to do that and you can get on it at weightlossmadereal.com slash group. I hope to see you back here next week where we will continue to work on your emotional eating and that habitual overeating step-by-step step until they both become something you used to do. We know that's your goal. So for now, this is your Coach Cookie reminding you that as you search for answers, keep it real, just like you. And I will see you next week. Music